Hey there, it's Michael Bust. Welcome back to my channel where I share videos uh, specifically made for my Math 7 and Pre-Algebra students. So here we go. Alright, another daft joke before we get started. Why did one-fifth go get a massage? Because it was two-tenths. Get it? Two-tenths? Two-tenths? I know. It's a daft joke. In Lesson 3.2, we're going to focus on the idea of slope. Uh, what slope refers to is the uh, a couple of things. One, it's the steepness of a line. Um, it also is, represents the ratio of the change in one quantity and the change in another quantity. And we'll see uh, a few examples in today's lesson. Now, in this chapter, we're going to be focusing on this essential question. Why are graphs helpful? I would also add uh, to that essential question, why are tables helpful? Um, and so we'll explore uh, that question or those two questions throughout this chapter. And then um, our mathematical behavior that we're going to focus on in this chapter is going to be to persevere with problems. So uh, when we're faced with a problem that's challenging, that we don't give up on it, that we find other ways to attack it. Lesson 3.2 is called Slope, and we're going to be working on pages 181 through 188. So in order for us to find the slope, we're going to use a graph or a table. But we need to think of slope as a rate of change. And we can represent the slope as the rise rise over the run. Now, what does that mean? Well, rise is going to be the change in our vertical placement of points on a coordinate grid. And then the run is going to be the change in the horizontal placement of points on a line on a number uh, in a coordinate grid. All right, so we're looking to find the slope of this treadmill, all right? And so the slope is going to be a ratio of the rise over the run. So remember, rise is going to be that vertical uh, displacement, that vertical change, and the run is going to be that horizontal uh, movement. Um, so here we have a rise of 10 inches, And then our run is going to be 48 inches. So we can think of that ratio as the slope 10 over 48. But I can simplify that by dividing both 10 and 48 by 2, and I get 5 over 24. So what that means is for every 5 inches that the treadmill goes up in a vertical direction, it will try the uh, the change in the y or the x value is going to be 24 inches. Try problem A on page 182. Pause the video, come back to it, and check your work with mine. Our slope is going to be our rise over our run, and so in this problem, we know that the vertical change or the rise was six feet. And that horizontal change, or the run, was 100 feet. I can simplify that by dividing both 6 and 100 by 2, and I get 3 over 50. What that means is for every 6 feet that I go up, I have walked forward 100 feet. Or, sorry, 50 feet. 
In example two on page 182, I can find the slope of a line by just using the points that are on that line. And so I can see that if I go from the point 24 to the point 36, I have uh, risen or have a rise of two units, and my run is one unit. And so if I think of that as the ratio of the rise over the run, that's going to be 2 over 1. And if I simplify that, it's just 2. So the slope is 2. Now, the slope of the line is going to be the same no matter what points that I pick. So let's take a look at the, what happens if I go from the point 3, 6 to the point 5, 10. So from 6 to 10, that's going to be a change of 4 units. And then from 3 to 5, that's going to be a change of 2 units. So I have 4 over 2. And if I simplify that, I'll get 2 holes. And so notice that my slope is the same 2 no matter where I am on that line. I can use a table to find the slope. And so what I'm looking for is the change in my y value. And I'm going to divide that by the change in my x value. And if this truly is a line, I can pick any points in this table uh, to find what my slope is. So I'm going to choose the point. Um, 3, 9, and the point 7, 3. So I'm going to find my change in y. So from 9 to 3, so I'm just going to write that as 9 minus 3. And I'm going to divide that by the change in my uh, y value, or x values, which was the time. And so I'm going to have 3 minus 7. 9 minus 6, that'll, sorry, 9 minus 3, that'll be 6. And then 3 minus 7, that's going to be a negative 4. I can have negative slopes. And so the slope of this line is negative 3 over 2. How about you work on problems B and C on page 183? Uh, pause the video here. Solve these two problems and come back to the video and check how you did based on my answers. All right, so the vertical change or the rise from these two points is three units. The horizontal change or the run is going to be one, two, three, four units. So my slope is going to be the ratio of my rise, which was writing out the formula rise over run. And so that uh, rise or change in my uh, y value is 3. And then my uh, run or the change in my x value is going to be 4. In problem C, um, I, once again, I can choose any two points in this table. So I'm going to choose the point negative 6, negative 2, and the point negative 2, negative 1. So I'm going to find my change in y, and I'm going to divide that by the change in my x value. So the change in my y is going to be negative 2 minus a negative 1. And then the change in my x value is going to be negative 6 minus a negative 2. So negative 2 minus a negative 1 is going to be negative 1. Trust me, it will be. 
and then my change in my x is going to be negative 4, and if I simplify negative 1 over negative 4, I get 1 fourth. There is a slope formula, and the slope formula uh, is given as m, so m becomes my uh, variable for the slope, and that's going to be the formula m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So let's use the slope formula to figure out what the slope of the line that passes through R and S. Now I'm going to label my uh, Y values as Y1 and Y2, and then I'm going to label my X values as X1 and X2. So notice that my X1 goes with my Y1 and my X2 goes with my Y2. I have to make sure that, that that pattern stays the same. So I'm going to have 3 minus 2 over negative 4 minus 1. All right, so 3 minus 2, that's going to be 1. And negative 4 minus 1 is going to be negative 5. So once again, I have a negative slope, and it's going to be negative one-fifth. Now I want you to practice using that slope formula on problems D and E on page 184. Pause the video here, come back to it uh, once you've come up with uh, your solutions and check your work with mine. All right, so in problem D, I'm labeling my x1 and my x2 and my y1 and my y2. And so I'm going to get 3 minus 2 as the change in my y value over 5 minus 2, which is going to be the change in my x value. And that's going to give me a slope of 1 over 3. In problem E, I'm going to go ahead and label uh, my coordinates, my x1 and x2, and my y1 and y2. Um, if you labeled j as x2, y2, and k as x1, y1, um, you will still get the same slope. So I'll have negative 2 minus a negative 4 over negative 3 minus a negative 7. Now remember, when I'm subtracting a negative number, I'm doing the opposite, so I'm going to be adding. So negative 2 plus 4, that's going to be positive 2. And then negative 3 minus negative 7, that's really negative 3 plus 7, which will be positive 4. And I can simplify 2 fourths to be the fraction 1 half, so that is going to be my slope. All right, so I want you to be prepared for the next class period by working on the following problems, page 185, numbers 2, 4, 6, and 8, and page 186, number 10, but I want you to do all three of those parts. Make sure you upload a picture of your work to Classroom before the start of the next class so I can give you the proper feedback um, and make sure that you are working with me on the appropriate problems or you could be working on some uh, challenge problems. And don't forget, if you like this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more math tutorial videos.